I, c- I could be wrong, but um, it's they're essentially sell- illegally selling stolen property because nobody's been convicted yet. Yep. And uh, yep. you know they're not they're not allowed to sell to sell seized property until the owner of that property has been convicted. Now, since these are just user accounts, maybe that doesn't apply. Um, but that's what a lot of people are saying, and so it, it seems like a pretty bold move that they're actually doing that. Yeah, it is kind of a bold move, but then again, the government is bold sometimes. They, they don't yeah. give a, they don't give a damn. They don't give a damn that some accounts on Silk Road were actually selling legal products. You know, they don't give a damn that the vast majority of drugs on Silk Road were actually um, um, relatively harmless. I mean, most of the dealers were selling marijuana, and it's like, yeah. well. That's that's legal, completely legal in two states now, and we have medical marijuana in over a dozen states. Uh, yeah, New York, New York State just legalized, or they just worked out a deal to legalize medical marijuana today. That was announced. Oh wow, very nice. Yeah, so that's another state. Yeah, good for New York. So I mean, what <laughs> whatever the government has these coins now, so yeah, someone someone's gonna get them. Yeah, on Silk Road, the majority of drugs being sold was really high quality marijuana and um, prescription drugs. Yeah, like there were very few instances of meth, uh, heroin, and cocaine being sold. They also sold uh, hallucinogenics like LSD and mushrooms too. Yeah, 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 um, and uh, MDMA pills. Yeah, yeah, like they weren't they weren't even like selling a ton of hard drugs like heroin and and coke and such like. It was it was a it was a pretty good well regulated marketplace and I and like a- anyone watching this who's who's curious to find out like um, how much good Silk Road actually did in terms of reducing violence go check out my article that I wrote a couple weeks ago about this topic and um, yeah it's 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 a really interesting phenomenon and you know we've still got we still got a um, bunch of darknet markets that sprung up to replace Silk Road. Um, Hopefully none of them get uh, get raided by the FBI as well, or else we'll start. We'll just see. We'll just keep seeing these random yeah. like auctions pop up where the government's trying to sell these coins they stole from marketplaces. Yeah, I actually saw. I think um, it was a different. It was a different government, another country, but they actually raided one of the dark net dark net markets. A different country Recent, did? Very recently. Yeah, huh. I'm looking it up right now to see. Um, yeah, New Zealand. Huh. Oh, no, it was... They were dark net market related, but not necessarily the market itself. Right, right, yeah. That's so. That's been happening more in the U.S. as well. Uh, I think there was some guy in Florida who was arrested for... <laughs> Uh, he, like the, they've they've been arresting people who have both been selling large amounts of drugs on darknet markets, as well as people who have been buying large amounts on darknet markets. So so they're they they're trying to take down these people who um, are either buying to resell on the streets, or who are selling to people who resell on the streets, which is which is one of the main reasons why it reduces violence. But uh, like yeah. the government sees it as, oh, these are the, these are like the kingpins we've got to take down. They can't. It's not easy for them to take down the market operators. Like yeah, some, I mean it's it's peer to peer networks. I mean yeah, they can yeah. take down one guy and, and the the market will still be fine. Yeah, yeah, and I think that a lot of marketplaces now are covering their tracks better than Ross Ulbricht did. If it's true yeah. that that guy like tried to hire a hitman and all this crazy business if that's true i don't know if it is it could be the government trying to slander him but if it's true like that's a serious serious misstep and yeah you just i mean you can't you can't do that so but um did you hear the story of uh how ross Ulbrich actually got busted yeah yeah um yeah. i i read the i read the stuff but yeah refresh my memory he um he was on his laptop in a public library. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. it wasn't yeah. it wasn't like 
super RoboCop hacker technology that they that the FBI used to bust this guy. They just kind of found out that he was uh, that he was uh, part of it, and so they f- somehow figured out he was going to the library one day, and they followed him there, and he was on his laptop. Yeah. And he he stood up to like go to the bathroom or something, and um, and they knew that his hard drive was encrypted, so they had to they had to get him before he closed his laptop, or else there was no way they'd be able to get into it. <laughs> yeah. So he like he stood up to go to the bathroom or something, and as he was closing the lid on his laptop, the people who were there undercover pounced on him, and that's how they got it. Like it was just like. It was just sheer luck, basically. Yeah, they were probably watching from the shadows for like the right moment to go, yeah. to go and tackle him, get the handcuffs on him, and then go hurry, snag his laptop before it goes to sleep or locks or something. So yeah, yeah, he didn't he didn't cover all his tracks. He messed up. Yep, but I actually saw, um, I think it was on Reddit that they were um, that his defense is like they're they're trying to use some loophole. Uh, in the law that says um, server hosters aren't legally responsible for the things that go on on their servers. Huh. And um, so I don't know. I, I guess that could work if they if they can prove that he wasn't buying and selling drugs. He was just like running uh, an, a deep web node or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. His lawyer will probably try and make that defense. Yeah, but and and I there's also a story that came out where he's he's trying to claim his bitcoins back, his personal stash from the government, saying that it's his property. But at the same time, he's not admitting that he ran Silk Road, but he is trying to say those are his bitcoins. So interesting, um, interesting legal argument. Uh, I can't yeah. wait for that trial as well. That's set for uh, early November, I think. Oh, this is um kind of related to that it would they um the fbi got a hacker i saw this a few weeks ago um he like he hacked into at&t servers and got a bunch of people's information and they um and so the f the fbi called him and arrested him and he was in prison for a while and um he appealed his case and so it went to the appeals court and the judge threw out the case um, because of a technicality. Uh, the guy was the guy was in somewhere in the Midwest. I think it's like Arizona or New Mexico. Hmm. Uh, and the um, and the actual AT&T servers that he hacked were in um, some state in the Northeast. And so they um they prosecuted him in the state where the AT&T servers were instead of the state where he actually committed the crime. So the judge threw out the case. Hmm. And so after he got released, this guy sent an invoice to the FBI um, to uh, telling them to compensate him for the time he spent in jail. And, um, and his, he said his going, his going rate for his hacking services was one Bitcoin per hour. And so he like added up all the hours he spent in prison, and it was like tens of millions of dollars yeah. that he sent a bill to the federal government for. It was hilarious. Yeah, because he couldn't he couldn't work during that time, so he's like, "You got to compensate yeah. me. I couldn't work." Yeah, I thought that was hilarious. Like the the fact the fact that he just like sent a bill to the federal government for making him stay in prison, but he also wanted it payable or uh, paid in Bitcoin, which I thought was even <laughs> funnier. Like he he wanted like. I can't remember how many bitcoins he wanted, but it was like several million dollars that he wanted the government to pay him. That's pretty funny. He should have he should have yeah. just sent them like a straight up like a um, a bitcoin payment request, like you know in, <laughs> in text payable to my bitcoin address and then and then the special send them the amount. QR code. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I, he sent them like a legit like legal invoice. It was. Wow. Yeah. Oh, very and professional. He, he wrote, Good for him. He wrote like a a letter and stuff too. It was pretty funny. Wow. wow. I just that I just remember that talking about Ross Ulbricht. I don't know what it has to do with Silk Road or anything. Probably nothing, but Yeah. Hey, laws laws are laws are 
funny, man. Like if you if you know the right like loopholes to exploit, you can use a law to accomplish almost anything. It's harder when you're going against the government because they've got pretty much all the good lawyers on their side. But yeah, you know, um, if if Ross's lawyer is pretty good, if all these other guys' lawyers can uh, are creative enough, they can find a way to maybe yeah. maybe get some of their rights back. You know. Yeah, that's why lawyers make so much money, though. They're good at finding loopholes in the language and stuff. Yeah, that's true.